Uh, first up, though, let's talk about, well, I mean, we're told there's a culture war going on set up by the Tories. That's what Nicola Sturgeon, the SNP leader and, of course, First Minister of Scotland, has had to say. This after the, the Westminster government slapped down and blocked um, her bid by her government, voted for, of course, by a majority, cross-party majority in the Scottish Parliament uh, for basically uh, trans people, people who believe they are born into the wrong sex, uh, to basically self-identify as the opposite gender after just a few months and even down to the age of 60. No surgery, no medical assessment, no treatment of any sort. The obvious risks of this, I mean, as I say, they're obvious, are they not? In terms of anyone can just simply say, particularly men, uh, can say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman, and then gain uh, the access to uh, safe space places for women which are needed for, let's face it, our safety uh, and our comfort, frankly. I just don't want to be in a changing room with a man. Call me old-fashioned. Let's talk about this with Miranda Yardley. He, she's a human rights activist and also is um, a trans woman. Miranda, I say she. Do you prefer being called she or he? I, I don't like to be required to do this, but, but I always think I'm happy to do it as a matter of courtesy. Oh, I think it's absolutely nuts we're in a position where we have um, men demanding that actual women such as yourself call men she. <laughs> I, okay. I, think hey. I think it's a real insult to women. I, I'd like, yes, okay, well, thank you. I mean, okay, I'd like to be polite. I mean, you know, again, I, always, I, I, I haven't asked you that the last few times. Um, this is the thing most people, I think, in this country do want to not cause offence, so they want to sort of, you know, be, be inclusive and all of that. I don't think we're a nasty, horrible country where we're trying to sort of put people down, certainly not vulnerable minorities. Nicola Sturgeon is basically accusing the uh, Prime Minister in blocking that trans law, and we spoke about it, trans self ID law, last week um, of, of basically trying to you know use trans people in a culture war to shore up his vote do you think Rishi Sunak did that or do you think she did that I, I think that's um, that, that's some pretty serious gaslighting going on there really um, I if you look at the history of how this has been this was presented to Holyrood and the way that the the, the, the debate was done, the way that they brought in um, that guy from the United Nations at, at least twice to effectively speak over women who were speaking up for the rights of girls and women. I, I find it quite extraordinary that she would come out with with such a easily falsifiable statement. And yeah, she's trying to gaslight the whole country. I mean, I mean, this is the thing. This is really, this is really quite basic stuff, isn't it? I mean, uh, you don't have to be anti-trans or transphobic in any way whatsoever. Um, wanting people to, you know, I, I couldn't care less what you call yourself, what you wear, live your best life. Um, good for you. Um, doesn't make any difference to me, other than, you know, if you're a man and you're in the, the changing rooms or the toilets for my, my daughter or I am there, um, or, or trying to, if... You know, if someone is a man who is a sex predator, and we've seen this again and again, getting their way into women's safe spaces, including women's prisons, into women's prison cells. And we've seen this happen. And yet, anyone who speaks out on this is called a bigot and is called transphobic. And we saw the extraordinary thing where we saw two uh, SNP politicians, uh, Kirsten uh, Oswald and... Uh, 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 Kalkab Stewart, an MSP, one an MP, one an MSP, standing at a demonstration over the weekend under a banner with a guillotine and the slogan saying in very clear, bright blue and red letters, decapitate TERFs. Cut the heads off TERFs. TERFs being trans-exclusionary radical feminists. TERF is now the equivalent of calling someone a witch. Women who say, no, women are women, Men are men, and men can't become women. That's that's what a turf is. I'm a turf, apparently. Um, saying decapitate turfs. Democratically elected politicians, so supposedly a nice party, the SNP, standing in front of that sign, very clearly, that sign was there for a long time. It wasn't just didn't suddenly appear behind them when the cameras were there. What do you make of that? Well, th this type of violent rhetoric is is not new. This has been this has been going on for. As, as long as this uh, culture war has been battled out on uh, social media and in other places. The, you know, the, 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 the response to, you'd have thought that the response to any form of uh, disagreement or rights conflict would be, hey, let's sit down and work something out. No, but let's, uh, let's instead do the whole, um, let's bring in the death penalty for people who disagree. <laughs> Violent rhetoric has been at the forefront of the trans um, debate for, uh, the, the, for at least 20 years, and it is, uh, I think it is a significant problem. I think that violent rhetoric has, it, it breeds situations, it, and it, it breeds an environment where 
um, we where, where we have groups of men who think that it is absolutely fine and dandy to threaten or even commit violence against women who disagree with yeah. them. I mean, you, you say violent rhetoric. It's gone further than that, hasn't it? We have seen actual physical pushing and, and, and proper, you know, violence, intimidation of women when police officers, by the way, just stood by extraordinarily. And we saw intimidation by uh, Labour MP Lloyd Russell Moyle of his own colleague on the Labour benches, Rosie Duffield, who has been talked about how she feels almost like a, a victim of domestic abuse in terms of how she's being treated by the Labour Party. Apparently a figure close to uh, Keir Starmer in his office saying she should spend less time at lunch with J.K. Rowling and more time in a constituency because she went to one lunch which J.K. Rowling did for some uh, women campaigning for, for women's rights. But uh, we spoke to Lord Russell Moyle on the show last week about what he had to say, just calling, being very derogatory about women MPs who were talking about this issue. But I, I hadn't seen at that time, and it came out later, that he'd actually been physically intimidating as well. Lloyd, if you want to come back on and defend it, he actually moved onto the benches to sort of sit really close to, to MPs, m Tory and Labour, who were speaking out on this issue. And, and no one says a word. It's extraordinary. Uh, yeah, it's quite something. I think it was uh, Miriam Cates that he... Mm. Um, he's Tory MP. Pretty much too. Yeah, it doesn't matter where she's from, which side of the house she's from. Uh, what we have there is a man who is engaging in uh, intimidating behaviour to, uh, and it feels entitled to do this in in view of full public. Um, the, the man's got a disgusting attitude towards women, and I I, I think that I, I think that really we need to look at. Uh, what what he's done is an extension of where all of this violent rhetoric that uh, trans activists have been coming out with so long is it's it's the natural it's the natural progression of that that idea if it's all right to be uh, if it's all right to come up with violent rhetoric against women then intimidating women is all fair and dandy this is this is part of a huge problem yeah. we, we're in an environment where we consider ourselves to be more tolerant and uh, less uh, you, you, you know less less sexist or oppressive towards women and what do we have we have men like him who feel that he can you know he can basically get in get in her face when he yeah. disagrees with her on yeah. something it's classic abuse I, I, i'd love to see him doing that to a man in the pub and getting away with it put it that way it's also i'm just one thing i want to put up and i, I tweeted about this yesterday lord kunzberg uh, interview with um, nicholas sturgeon yesterday on the bbc and they were talking about the gender self-id issue and 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 laura kunzberg you know, is a very well uh, established and very respected journalist she talked about biological women who are biologically female at birth and, and i agree to say just use the correct word we all know what the correct word is the word is women but everyone getting themselves into this and talking about women almost like there's women biological women women who are born women as if we're a subcategory of women because there are these trans women you yourself live your life you're a biological man you're a man you live your life wearing women's clothes with women's house that you live as a trans woman but you you know you're not a woman and there's nothing there's no operation or a drug you could take that would make you a woman so why is everyone in why are they into these tongue twisting things where they talk about biological women and biologically female at birth <laughs> I, I, I guess it's because what they want to do is they want to um, make themselves feel all in inclusive. And you see, there we've got a real problem. And uh, it was the interview was Laura Quisenberg, wasn't it? And she's, you know, she's a very strongly opinionated, opinionated strongly minded woman. And she is bowing to this this use of language, this this utterly false use of language. There are, you know, there, there are. <laughs> as far as biological sex goes there are there are women and men uh, females and males there's nothing else there's there's no there's no fudge to be had yeah. uh, i think that any man who is claiming to live as a woman is making a you know is living under a false premise the only way that anyone can understand what it is to to live as a woman is to be be someone who is a member of the female sex class because the consequences of living as a woman with a um as a as a living as someone in the female sex class are as we all know are felt very very sharply yeah. within the type of society that we have indeed miranda yardley will have to leave it there human rights activist and also a trans herself himself as you prefer this is talk breakfast <laughs>